no good way to put it, so I'm just gonna say it. After 10 years, Alexis on Fire has decided to part ways. I'm gonna try and give you the facts about this as best I can. Almost a year ago, Dallas informed us that he would be leaving Alexis on fire after we finished our Old Crow's Young Cardinals tour cycle. Trying to balance his life between touring with us at the same time quelling the success of City and Color was a task too difficult to continue managing. He informed us he wanted to focus his efforts on City and Color. It was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in my life was to sit here and tell those four guys that I was going to leave the band, you know, like Nothing I think I will ever do will, will, uh, will surpass that moment. Then he's like, well, so I'm doing the rest of this tour cycle and then I'm quitting Alexis on Fire. We're like, oh, <laughs> okay, well here we are. We're like, oh, I thought we were gonna talk about going to Brazil. Well, this is a totally different experience. This kind of sucks. Creates a whole, a whole lot of um, feelings of mainly of, uh, of disconnection, of sadness. It was tough, you know, I mean, we spent the last 10 years playing together every day. You know, we've been there for each other's like low points, each other's high points, and it was strange, you know? It was a really strange time of changes for everybody. It's not like breaking up with a girlfriend or quitting a job. It's like telling four guys who you know so intimately, basically that you're, that you're I know better than I know my family, that I'm gonna leave and go do something else without them. But I knew I had to do it, you know, because I was on the brink of, you know, a, ner a like a nervous breakdown, you know, and I, I kind of had a couple up until that point. So I knew it was the right decision uh, for me, but it, that didn't make it any easier. So. Seven trumpets while they speak in Under the knowledge Dallas was leaving, the rest of us discussed the future of the band. After much deliberation, we decided to continue and attempt the difficult task of replacing Dallas. But as that was starting to move forward, something still wasn't right. I mean, even with the, uh, the songs we were creating, the four of us, there was that missing link. I think Alexis on Fire is the five of us for a reason. I was like hell bent on keeping it going. I was traveling and trying to play with different musicians and find a new guitar player, and it wasn't lining up. I don't think that was making anyone feel particularly positive or confident about what we were doing. Do we try to continue, Alexis, or do we just uh, screw the cap on, on, on the lid there? And I made up my mind that I just didn't think it was going to happen, you know? And I don't think that's a, that's a terrible position to be in, you know? If you don't think you're going to put out the work of your career, I don't know if you should be doing it, you know?
time got the best of us. Over the last six months, we all dealt with a litany of personal issues which pulled us further from Alexis on Fire. In addition to that, Wade was recently asked to join another band, and he felt it was an opportunity he would like to pursue. I got approached by Gallows. This is probably a year after Dallas had left, and uh, they'd asked me to sing, and I felt like it was something I had to do, and I went in and had that, you know, terrible conversation with the guys at rehearsal said, I don't know what everyone's thinking, but this is something I gotta do, like, right now. That was even more of a piss off, because we were, we were, like, the four of us were actually, we were next door jamming, and we were like, okay. Wade's kind of like, oh, before we jam, we should probably talk to you guys about something. And he's like, uh, so the guys from Gallows gave me a call, and I'm probably gonna join the band. I'm like, oh, so I guess that means we're over? Or you're quitting? He's like, yeah, oh, okay. And that was kind of like, oh, what a bummer. Well, I think maybe that was me admitting it to myself that it was time. It was, it was me admitting it to myself that it was time to call it a day. And I think everyone else, you know, decided in the coming days that that was, that was time as well. Replacing one guitar player slash singer slash writer was something we thought was possible. But replacing two would run the serious risk of perverting the legacy of what we had achieved. So we all took a good hard swallow and decided to end it so it would never get old and ugly. I was in New York um, and George called me to say that Wade uh, had told them that they was, he was gonna join Gallows and that they were gonna, like, he was like, we're gonna, I think the band, we're gonna call it. It kinda made sense at that point. There, were, there was thoughts of, uh, would we continue on? It was just like, nah, it'd be like a bastardization of what it was and it wouldn't be, wouldn't be Alexis without two guys missing, you know? We probably would have been trying to slug it out and made a not very good record as a result of that, you know? In the end, you know, Wade saying that and, and going was kind of the impetus that stopped it. It was a really hard conversation for me to have with the, the other three guys. Even though I felt like we were giving it a shot, we called it at a great time. Was the breakup amicable? Not really. Was it necessary? Probably. Regardless, the members of this band are my family, and I wish them nothing but good fortune. This is not a funeral. This is a wake, people. It's a goddamn celebration of the life of Alexis on Fire. Let's try, let's try to replace an occupation because we were born in a race to miss and be gone. We are in a way of a world undone. Like a bird, we strike. We weren't going to do this if we had to drag anyone into doing it. Like, I wasn't going to try and call these guys up and like, do me a favor, man, we need to do this one last tour, man. I got a call from our manager, and he was like, hey, I saw Dallas last, last week, and she was saying, let's do this Alexis tour. If anything, I think Dallas was the one who needed to come to the table and be for it. Like, because when I heard that, like, that Dallas was in, I just knew that, like, if Dallas is in, then it's not going to be, like, a hard talk to everybody. After the almost two year break, uh, going into our first rehearsal, I wasn't sure. I was excited, I was really nervous. Part of me was worried. I was nervous that my voice wouldn't hold up, as I was for most of my career in the band. I was definitely apprehensive, because I hadn't played any Alexis stuff probably a year and a half, at least. Can we play the songs in a manner that's going to befit the venues that we are playing at? We had a, a jam at Dal's place uh, early on when we found out we were going to do the tour, finally. And uh, it was me, Dallas, and Steele. There was one rehearsal 
with Dallas Steel, Beard, and me. And then when Wade got home, we had one full practice in my basement. Wade got home three days before we left for the tour. He was on tour with the Gallows. I'd flown back, gone in at night, woke up that next morning and drove to Dallas's house to, uh, to rehearse with the guys. He was planning his wedding, which was happening five days after we got home from tour. And so it was the first time the five of us had been in the same room, you know, since, I guess since we broke up. We had a 10 enough set list. We had, you know, 27 songs we were willing to play. The gear kind of works. We're gonna be all right. It was the first time I'd played guitar in about a year. And these are songs that uh, some of them we created in uh, Wade's mom's basement back in 2001. We started playing and uh, everything fell into place right away. We remembered the songs. <laughs> the notes almost played themselves. It's everything just came back like riding a bike. You know, we could have practiced for two straight months or not practice at all, and going out on stage would have felt exactly the same. It would have felt weird, no matter what, because we hadn't played together in two years. We started talking about we should do one final show. Let's do a Toronto show. We knew we weren't going to be able to go everywhere, and we knew that we were going to, you know, aggravate a lot of people. We just wanted to kind of pack in as much as we could in the amount of time that we had. It was just given that we would need to play and want to play uh, London, England to start the tour off. Our manager came back and was like, let's do Toronto, London, Melbourne. How about that? One of my most memorable shows in all of the thousands of shows I played with Lexus was the first time we played in Australia, in Adelaide. And Australia is almost like a second home. We wanted to try and do Canada as comprehensively as we could have. Four nights in Toronto, one show in Hamilton, the second Montreal show, Calgary, Vancouver. We picked our favorite places to play. Obviously, there were a lot of places we missed out on. <laughs> The thing that really cracked it open and turned it into a tour, I think, was the Brazil show. It was on our list of places, almost like a bucket list. We always wanted to go there. We thought, why not go there for the first time and the last time? And that turned out to be like, Probably one of the best shows we've ever played as a band. Top three hottest Alexis on Fire shows ever. The ceilings and walls were just dripping. Our Brazilian fans were always messaging us. They were like, come to Brazil. You've never been to Brazil. What are you doing? We really cut a line across the world over those years and we played an insane amount of shows, you know, in an insane amount of places. So it was nice to end it like this. Way out the sound. Way out no fight. I want to thank everybody who traveled far and wide to be here tonight. <laughs> our, uh, our gratitude is depthless, endless for you people. Thank you very much. So, if you came to celebrate, now's your f chance, so get celebrating. It was great to, to end the band in such a positive way because I think it really deserved a proper send off, you know? It deserved to be some fireworks instead of something just fizzling out. When it became reality that we were gonna be able to do it one more time, it was just, uh, yeah, over, just the best. It was the best. I can't believe this is 
So many moments, like some of which are unbelievable, some of which are scary. For me, it was uh, getting to play with the bands that I grew up listening to, like Metallica and Faith No More and like Alice in Chains. And we just did all these festivals and we got to play with these huge bands that I was so into when I was, when I was a kid. It's almost like a dream, make believe kind of thing to be in, in an airport with your guitar in your hand um, in Tokyo and asking yourself, how kind of thing, how? Wow. I remember a good one where we, we didn't have enough money to stay at a hotel and we had a really long drive and we were in the desert in the States and we just pulled over on the side of the desert and slept in the van and I remember we had the, the, the windows open because it was, we knew it was going to be so hot in the morning. But Steele woke up in the middle of the night and he, I guess he was, he said he, like, he was worried s desert like spiders or scorpions were going to get in the van so he shut all the windows while we were sleeping. And we all just woke up like, like dying in the desert heat, sleeping in the van. And I used to settle all of our shows when I was like 18. I used to carry brass knuckles around like I was gonna smash up the promoter if he didn't give me that 50 bucks. And I was like, we were just like, whatever it takes. And I literally thought in my 18 year old brain that, you know, yeah, if the promoter in New Jersey doesn't give us that, it's probably something obscene, like it was probably 50 bucks. like. I'm gonna have to, I don't know what I was imagining, like me pulling him out and putting him on the table or something. Like, no idea. Never had to use him. So that's good. <laughs> first van was like this unbelievable 80s van with like four captain's chairs, so spacious. We thought this van is unbelievable. This is the one, you know? We tried to go on our very first tour in the States. Like we were like, you know, we're gonna show everybody we're going on tour in the States. And our van broke down four hours outside of St. Catharines. And we had to be towed back to the border. And then my dad had to come pick us up. Eventually we did a tour across Canada and we had a bit of money and we, and we, we bought this like Ford, E350 Super Duty, like, you know, 15 person passenger van. And man, did we ever put miles on that thing, man. We, we drove that thing everywhere. The seats were like starting to rip. And it wasn't even that old. We just used it so much. Like, the seats were starting to fall apart and it had this weird, it always had this weird smell in it. The van for me was like my child. Like, I drove probably 350,000 of those kilometers myself because I am a control freak. I uh, always drove because I couldn't handle when anybody else was driving. That got us, you know, across North America 10 or 15 times. And near the end, it didn't, it ran, but not great. We were always kind of apprehensive about going anywhere too far with it. I was the, la the Alexis member to see the van's last uh, days on the road. We were driving to a, uh, a festival in Clifford, Ontario, going down the QEW towards Hamilton, the front left tire just exploded and our, and our trailer, full of gears, started fishtailing. So the van and trailer is now sideways on the QEW and uh, straight into the wall, into the median. And uh, somehow I was able to pull it back and just stay in the shoulder as the left-hand lane was passing at 100 kilometers an hour. and. Uh, just in shock, um, sweating, terrified of what happened, not knowing what happened. And then it was a write-off. We somehow collected all of our gear, got into individual vehicles and made it to that Clifford show with Monine on a baseball diamond. So we'll go to any lengths, we'll make it. We will make it. Whoa!
finishes and then you kind of start to take a good look at yourself and, and think about you know what the what your next moves are and if you want to continue in music if you want to pursue other things in life kind of thing for the last year um, I've been touring really hard with this band called gallows I go to Australia with them in a few weeks and we start touring again so uh, touring 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 back in the van music and food and just um, that's pretty much it like in the, in the in my shop is kind of what uh, what I'm up to these days I've got a, some pretty substantial irons in the fire but you know none of which I really feel the need to promote they're not really music related they're the things that I'm doing outside of that I think there was kind of a desire to move on to something something else and try and kind of push myself to do something that I've never really done before. I just made a new City in Color record, so that'll come out this year and I'll you know, continue doing that. Who knows, maybe I'll put out a weird, you know, jazz fusion record one day. Hopefully not, but you never know what's going to happen, so. I don't overwhelm myself with, uh, you know, the, the future, but for right now, I think I'm putting it aside and I'm not going to uh, continue with music right now. Having your band break up is a very, very soul-searching thing to do. <laughs> I suggest everyone do it. It'll make you a better person in the end. Yeah. Break up your band. In closing, I would like to offer my sincerest gratitude to the fans of Alexis on Fire around the world. I'm forever grateful to anyone who has ever taken any interest in what we did. You were the coal that stoked our engines. You have given us a spectacular decade rich with experience and joy. I love you all. Take solace in the fact that you live in one of the most exciting musical eras. Try to support some of your local independent artists in the same way that you supported us. A life of musical exploration is a rich and fulfilling one. Love, George.